Hello again and today we are going to talk about some frequently asked questions about diabetes. In India there are nearly 65 million people who suffer from this problem and the number is rapidly rising and it is expected that by the year 2020 or so there will be over 100 million people who suffer from this problem. It is therefore essential to understand what exactly diabetes is so that you can get to grips on how to manage this problem effectively from home itself. So what are we going to talk about in this particular video? Uh, one of the things we will be discussing is what is diabetes? What are the types of diabetes? So we'll be looking at pre-diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. What are the symptoms of diabetes? How can one detect diabetes? Are you at risk of developing this condition? When should you get yourself checked and what are the available treatments for this problem? So we'll start off with what diabetes is. So in very simple terms, diabetes is a condition where the level of glucose in the bloodstream is elevated. Now using the term blood sugar is probably not the right thing to say. What we should be discussing is about blood glucose and not blood sugar, though they are often used synonymously uh, in during conversation. The problem with diabetes is not just the elevated glucose in the bloodstream, but the fact that if it is left untreated, it can damage vital organs such as the kidney, the heart, the eyes and the brain. And in addition to this, it can also affect the nerves and also the skin. So there are a number of complications of diabetes if it is left untreated. So this makes it a, a problem that has to be dealt with quite aggressively once it is diagnosed. So if we look at the types of diabetes, there are primarily two types, though there are a few others. I'll just talk about type 1 and type 2 diabetes and concentrate mostly on type 2 diabetes itself. So in type 1 diabetes, you have uh, the problem is primarily with the pancreas itself producing insulin. So if you are to look at uh, the healthy pancreas, the pancreas is an organ that is located right behind the stomach and is responsible for the production of insulin. So what happens is when you have any food, it gets digested in the gut and the glucose that is released from this digestion process is absorbed through the bowel into the bloodstream. Now, in order for this glucose to provide energy to the uh, cells, what needs to happen is the glucose needs to go and bind to cells and insulin also needs to go and bind to the insulin receptor. Only then can the glucose enter the cell and help provide energy. So this is very important. What happens in diabetes or at least in type 1 is there is no insulin to help the glucose enter the cells and consequently the glucose keeps lying out in the bloodstream itself. This doesn't provide any energy to the cell and this can be quite problematic because all the vital structures, the brain, the heart, the kidneys, all these organs require glucose for functioning. So if the glucose is in the bloodstream and not inside these vital structures, it cannot function. So the only way to treat patients with type 1 diabetes, which are primarily children by the way, is to give them insulin injections. Now individuals who are older, that is adults, who develop diabetes usually develop type 2 diabetes. And in type 2 diabetes, there is a concept that you need to understand called insulin resistance. What happens in insulin resistance is that the glucose that is present in the bloodstream is able to go and attach to the cells, but the insulin is not able to attach to the insulin uh, receptor. So as a result, the glucose is not able to come into the cell and provide it with energy. So this is what is known as insulin resistance. In simple terms, the cells fail to respond to insulin properly. So what are the treatments? When we prescribe any treatments for uh, diabetes, we are aiming at reducing uh, insulin resistance or improving the attachment of insulin to the receptor. And this will allow the glucose to be pushed into the cell to provide it with energy. Now, what are the symptoms of diabetes? Uh, the primary symptom of diabetes has been described as increased hunger, increased thirst and increased urination. But a lot of times patients don't experience any of these symptoms. Some of them come with unexplained weight loss. So they're not really voluntarily trying to lose weight, but they start to lose weight anyway. Some of them come with extreme fatigue. And a lot of times when anybody comes with tiredness, one of the first things that has to be looked for is blood sugar or blood glucose values. Increased hunger occurs because the glucose is lying in the bloodstream and is not being supplied to all the vital structures. So the brain thinks that you're not eating enough and makes you eat more. And in addition to that, having high glucose levels in the blood makes you thirsty. It stimulates the thirst center in the brain, so you start drinking a lot of water. 
And the other thing is, once you drink a lot of water, you start to pass a lot more urine. The other symptoms that may occur from uh, high blood glucose levels are tingling and numbness. This is because the glucose irritates the nerves and can cause something called diabetic neuropathy. And we'll talk about the complications of diabetes in another video. But today we'll just talk about the symptoms now. The high glucose levels can cause swelling up of the lens in the eye and this can lead to blurred vision. In some individuals, the injury may occur to the foot or to the hands or some sort of injury may take place and they may not realize it because the nerves are affected, they lose their pain sensation and this wound can become quite infected and doesn't heal for months on end. This is because the bacteria that are present inside the wound use the glucose that is present in the bloodstream as food. So they feed on the glucose and they're able to proliferate and grow and the wound doesn't heal at all despite taking antibiotics. Finally, just as an anecdotal thing, urine attracting ants is something that was described initially when diagnosis, when a diagnosis of diabetes was made. Uh, this was many, many years ago, and this is how diabetes was actually discovered. They found that individuals who had high blood glucose levels were peeing out glucose in their urine, and this was attracting ants. So that's how it was discovered. So how do I know if I have diabetes? This is very difficult to ask or answer, sorry, because the patients ask us this question, but there's not really any concrete way to tell you have diabetes unless you have typical symptoms or you get yourself tested. So if you have symptoms, it is worthwhile checking your blood glucose levels. But if you have a strong family history, you getting yourself tested is all the more important because diabetes runs in the family. And a lot of patients with type 2 diabetes have a strong family history of the condition. They may have even a, their mother or father or both parents, a sibling or an uncle and aunt. Any one of them may have this condition. And it can be passed on to, through the genes. So it's quite important to make sure that if you have a family history, you get yourself tested. So what tests do you need to get done? Well, there are a number of different blood glucose investigations that can be done uh, at different times of the day. A combination of all these is important to make a diagnosis, not just one report. So normally the fasting blood glucose level is a check of your blood glucose after an 8 to 10 hour fast. A value below 100 is normal, 100 milligrams per deciliter that is, that is a normal value. But if the value exceeds 126 milligram per deciliter or 7 millimole in certain countries, then this is diabetes. Similarly, a postprandial gl blood glucose value is tested 2 hours after a meal and values above 200 are indicative of diabetes. Now, if you decide to get a random blood glucose check at any time of the day, and if you find that your blood glucose values are above 200 milligrams per deciliter, then it is likely you have diabetes, but other investigations are required. A very useful test in determining whether someone has diabetes or not is to check something called a glycosylated hemoglobin or a HbA1c. This basically checks what your blood glucose values have been over a period of three months and it is expressed as a percentage. Normal individuals have values below 5.7%, but if the three-month average of A1C is over 6.5%, it indicates diabetes. Now, if you are curious to find out if you have diabetes or not, then a useful test is an oral glucose tolerance test. Now, this test is often conducted in pregnant women to find out if they have diabetes, and here the glucose levels are checked initially at a fasting stage, and then the patient is administered an oral glucose load of 75 grams and the glucose values are checked two hours later. If the two hours post glucose load is more than 200 milligrams per deciliter, it is likely the individual has got diabetes. So these are some of the tests that are done to determine if someone has diabetes. But as I've mentioned before, it is not just one value that you can take as a concrete diagnosis. You have to have a combination of two or three together to make a diagnosis. Combine that with family history, the diagnosis becomes even more likely. Now, I'm just going to mention one small uh, slide or just a quick uh, review on what pre-diabetes is. So I mentioned earlier that a fasting blood glucose of below 100 is normal and above 126 is diabetes. But what about the values between 100 and 126? So this value is actually called pre-diabetes. It is not really normal, neither is it high enough to be termed diabetes. Similarly, with postprandial blood glucose values, a value between 140 and 200 milligrams per deciliter falls in the pre-diabetes range, and an average sugar in A1C of between 5.7 to 6.5% also falls in the pre-diabetes range. Pre-diabetes is important. I will discuss this condition in another 
uh, video. But what you need to remember is those individuals who have pre-diabetes, if they don't take the right steps in controlling their blood sugars, nearly 60% of them become diabetic within a year. And furthermore, the complications that are seen in diabetes are also seen in pre-diabetes. So it's quite important to take the right steps into in controlling blood sugar levels at this stage itself. Nip it in the bud, as they say. So how do you determine if you are at risk of diabetes? So first thing you need to know is that those individuals who have high blood pressure often have accompanying diabetes. For some reason, the two conditions are very closely interrelated. But not everybody who has high blood pressure develops diabetes, but a large proportion of patients who have diabetes eventually develop high blood pressure. The second risk factor is following an unhealthy diet. If you eat a lot of junk food, salty foods, or foods that are poor in nutrition but high in calories, then you place yourself at a greater risk of developing this problem. But one thing you must remember is just diet alone does not lead to diabetes. It is usually the strong family history that is a problem, as I have seen in the next image over there. So if you have a strong family history of the condition, you are more likely to develop diabetes. And some individuals who even take care of their health may develop diabetes, but this can be seen a lot later on in life. If you are overweight or obese and don't take care of your body weight, then you increase your risk. And if you are a couch potato who doesn't perform any exercise and has a sedentary job and a sedentary lifestyle at home, then you increase your chances again of developing this problem. So these are some of the common risk factors that you must be aware of that increase your chances of developing type 2 diabetes. So when do you get yourself checked? Once again, you can just get yourself checked if you think or you're worried about whether you have diabetes, then get yourself checked. If you have any risk factors, then just getting a simple blood glucose test using a glucometer is sufficient. Or you can just go to a lab and get your laboratory blood glucose values checked. If you've been experiencing any of the symptoms described earlier, then get your blood sugar level checked and that will give you a diagnosis straight away. If you're finding yourself tired for no reason and you're losing weight for no reason, then a simple blood sugar level will tell you whether or not you have diabetes. So how is diabetes treated? The I won't go into too much detail regarding this, but to briefly mention, you need to follow a healthy diet that is balanced in nutrition, contains good proportions of vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein and fats and carbohydrates, but ensure you you're choose simple, not simple, but complex carbohydrates and avoid simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are sugar and sweets, honey, jaggery and white rice. Complex carbohydrates include wheat-based foods, semolina, millets, uh, any such products that take a lot more time to digest. So we'll talk about these uh, foods that are devil or divine foods in another, in another uh, video. Sorry. The other step to prevent or to treat diabetes is performing regular exercise. So exercise increases the sensitivity of insulin to or sensitivity of the cells to insulin. So the insulin receptors become a lot more sensitive and bind to the insulin and allow the glucose to enter into the cells to provide it with energy. So the more you exercise, the lower your blood sugar gets and you can actually reverse your diabetes if you lose a lot of weight and exercise regularly. So make sure you perform a good amount of exercise. Once again, this will be talked about in detail in a video about treatment of diabetes. But what you need to know is combining diet and exercise is the most important thing when it comes to managing this condition. The next way is to take medication that is prescribed by your doctor. Now, many patients are not appreciative of medicines. They don't really like to take medicines, but do remember that these medicines do help in bringing sugars down. And sometimes diet and exercise may not be sufficient, especially if your sugar levels are very high in the blood. So make sure you take your tablets uh, as prescribed on time uh, to ensure your blood glucose levels come down. Now in advanced stages of diabetes or sometimes even in early diabetes, the glucose levels are so high that tablets alone are not sufficient and such patients may require insulin. So taking insulin is not a bad thing. It can actually help you achieve better blood sugar control and is more useful in patients who have developed some form of complications such as kidney disease or nerve disease or heart disease in di from diabetes. So insulin is a very useful treatment and can be combined well with oral medication and with diet and exercise. So how can you prevent diabetes? Well, a healthy living is the primary thing. Make sure you use healthy vegetables and fruits as a major part of your diet. 
snacking is okay but it's it should choose a healthy snack follow uh, an advice of a nutritionist if you need to make sure you maintain a healthy bmi that is body mass index and a, a good body weight and follow a healthy lifestyle make sure you sleep well get a balanced diet exercise regularly uh, you know avoid spending too much time on computer systems or or in front of the television instead just go for a 20 minute walk use the stairs more frequently there are so many ways and we'll talk about exercise and what you can do in another video when it comes to treatment of diabetes so with that i end the uh, brief talk on what diabetes is and it's just a brief overview on the frequently asked questions if you wish to get more information please do visit our website you can click on the link below this video or just visit this link https for slash heartsense.in and you shall get all the information you need.